What's going on YouTube? It's your host True Boxing. I'm back with another video. Um, this is my post fight, you know, Andre Berto, Carlos Quintana. And I know y'all like, you ain't even put up a damn pred prediction video. Well, was it really worth it? Um, let me first start from the beginning. I gotta address this before I even address this fight. Andre Berto, you're too damn old to be coming out with your ring interest with Soldier Boy. I know somebody else was available. Somebody, Drake, fucking Luane locked up, but somebody was available. Somebody. That was a bad look, dude. That was a bad look. But, um, back to the fight. Um, Basically, you know, it pretty much went how pretty people thought it would go. Um, Quintana looked weight drained. He looked it slow. Um, the speed was an issue. Uh, Andre Berto's hand speed was an issue. But once again, what I, once again, Andre Berto finds himself getting caught. First round again, he claimed that he was hit behind the head. They showed the camera from an overhead view, side view. Bam, right on the you know right on the jaw. He he went down. Um, that should have been ruled a legitimate knockdown. That was a knockdown. He was knocked down. Um, I did notice that he was getting hurt with, um, like, um, right hands. Like, you know, I mean, um, not right hands, but, um, but, but, um, but, um, but lefts, straight lefts. He was getting, he was getting, um, he was getting shook up with him. Um, he looked at awful in his fight. Just point, I mean, Berto looked at bad. He looked at really, really bad. He looked, you know, just out of it and whoever because i personally believe i believe the haiti situation was part of it but i believe he was also paid to step aside and his fight whoever's guy in his career that was a great move to take that buyout because shane would have fucking destroyed him um i knew shane would beat him but by seeing that that just basically um assures me of the outcome of that fight what would have happened um my opinion, you know, that was a great move for him. But basically, he did what pretty much everybody thought he'd do. Um, he pretty much tried to get um, Carlos out of there because, like everybody says, which I agree with, Carlos Quintana's the type of fighter you don't want. He's not great, but he's decent at everything. He's not the type of fighter you want to go distance with because he'll, as, as a lot of people say, flip that switch and take over. So Andre Berto did what he had to do, but I see a lot of maturing that needs to be done with him. Um, a lot of people say, you know, why didn't he fight Colazzo? And I'll tell you why. Because the fight was too close, and maybe he feel, feels in his heart of hearts he lost, or maybe he feels in his heart of hearts that the fight that he that he's too much of a close fight at this particular point in his in his career. Um, most people, when it's a controversial fight like with Floyd and um, Castile, you know, everybody thought he lost the first fight. Bam, he comes back. I'm gonna show you guys. You know, y'all might believe that I, you know, Floyd had a torn rotator cup, but no excuses. Okay. Bam, I'm going to come back and I'm going to beat him even more convincingly with the rematch. That's what a lot of champions do whenever a fight is too close for comfort. I personally believe that he does not want to fight, um, you know, he, he doesn't want to fight Colasso because the fight was too close. And maybe this time he might lose. Um, my opinion is if he does fight Colasso, it's going to be like after he's had a couple more fights, Colasso gets a little older and becomes inactive. Then he'll fight him. And then it'll be like, I beat him. But to me, it won't mean anything. And if you're a true boxing fan, you won't accept that bullshit. He should have, that fight should have took place. I thought it was mandatory, but whatever. Um, so basically, to make cut and, I mean, to make it you know real short and simple, Berto is not ready for the elite fighters. Good hand speed, but he's not ready for the likes of Floyd, Manny, um, just any elite fighter. Shane, he's not ready for them yet. And I see a lot of fucking you know chinks in his armor. He needs to he needs to shape up. Because he, he, I see a lot of issues, and I mean, he won't beat any elite fighters fighting like that. But um, moving on, um, another fight, Dana White. Now, I'm not really a big UFC fighter. I'll watch it. But Dana White, this, this basically proves my point about Dana White. Dana White does not give a shit about UFC, the building of the brand. I mean, does not give a shit about MMA. He only cares about building the brand of UFC. That's all he cares about, period. If it's not a cockfight, if you don't have two motherfuckers going in there swinging at each other, trying to hurt each other, rip each other's heads off, he don't give a shit. If you got skill and you got patience and you use that big-ass octagon like you're supposed to use and actually fight and show strategy, timing, and skill, he does not like that. 
I feel like it was very unprofessional for him to say what he said about Anderson um, Silva to the public. That should have been said behind closed doors. That was bullshit. And it was very. It was not professional. I seen the fight and I felt like you know, hey, that's how he fights. Everybody knows how he fights. Styles make fights. Put him in the ring with somebody that's going to challenge him. I mean, if I mean, what's the problem is he's. I mean, and the thing is he's winning. It's not like he's losing. He's winning. But you know that proves my point. If it's not a cock fight, Dana White don't want to see it. But that's all I got to say right now. I'm finna cook me some French fries. I keep looking back because I think my grease is burning. Peace out, bitches.